Si tu es en train de chercher à être ce que Dieu n'est pas appelé à être, peut-être que tu, tu ambitionnes d'être intelligent. Au meilleur de toi-même, tu seras un piètre. Mais si tu restes dans le couloir où Dieu t'a appelé avec un peu d'effort, tu vas t'en sortir. Et si tu travailles, tu, tu vas aller. On the 12th night, Brother Theodore shed more light on the issue of might developed the previous night. He explained that might should be developed following a predefined and elaborated plan. However, you should not look forward to developing might out of the domain of your call. Otherwise, at the best of your capacities, you will only be a mediocre. Meanwhile, when you develop might in the domain of your call, you succeed with little effort. And when you work hard, you excel. Expounding on this topic, the leader disclosed that might is not only in doing but also in being. The Bible is full of many examples of people who showed might in being. Rebecca was mighty in purity. Moses was mighty in humility. Esther was mighty in obedience. Paul was mighty in obedience. Nathaniel was mighty in truth. Caleb was mighty in wholehearted following, just to name a few. But Achodon noted further that might in being is of foremost importance. Indeed, he said, we read the book, The Joy of Begging to Belong to the Lord Jesus, so as to show that the founding leader was exceptional, not primordially in what he did, but in his being. Our ministry, he insisted, is essentially being. A content heart, a repentant heart, an honest heart, a heart that forgives, a pure heart, a patient heart, that is what our ministry is essentially. The being of a man is primordial to his doing. Pursuing in the teaching on leadership gifts, Brother Theodore brought out a number of eye-opening truths in the passage of Ephesians 4, verse 7 to 16. First, there are things that we must all have in common, which form the foundation of our fellowship with Christ and our fellowship with one another. These include the seven one listed in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4 to 6. One body, one spirit, one hope, one faith, one Lord, one baptism, one God and Father. Second, each one in the body of Christ has received from him a portion of his grace to serve Christ. These spiritual gifts are only portions, not the fullness, and they complement one another. None is self-sufficient. As far as these gifts are concerned, we are not to be the same or agree. We are diverse and different, but not divided. Spiritual gifts do not divide. They are meant to serve others. They start dividing as soon as you use them to build an identity or abuse them by claiming some special treatment or a reward because of your gifts. Third, God has made some members of the body gifts to his people so as to capacitate them to do their work. These men have received leadership gifts and are given to God's people to make them able to serve God. Therefore, leadership is more of what you bring people to do than what you do. An evangelist, for instance, is called to win souls more than everyone else. However, the true test of his leadership is whether he has capacitated the people of God to win souls. When you receive a ministry gift, it is not a call to open a new ministry, but to capacitate the people of God, Brother Theodore highlighted. Last but not the least, the body does not grow only with the work of leaders, but it grows when each one in the church does their work, when each member of the body is doing its work. Que tout ce que tu as reçu, c'est ta, ta part pour servir les autres. Nos dons ne nous divisent pas. Les dons divisent seulement quand les gens euh, s'accaparent de leurs dons pour se servir eux-mêmes. Mais les dons ne divisent pas. Celui qui a le don de guérison, on ne lui a pas donné ça pour, guérir, pour se guérir lui-même. Son, son, son don de guérison, c'est pour qui C'est pour les autres. 
C'est lui qui a donné dans le l'enseignement qu'on lui a donné, ça pour s'enseigner lui-même. C'est pour qui il est qu'un serviteur. Des grâces diverses. 